Today we have the privilege of taking a leisurely stroll to our next destination. No driving, no motorways, just a short walk across our beautiful town centre. Today's gourmet getaway is easily accessible for every Gibraltarian and probably walking distance from their home. We are very proud to say that today's gourmet producer is from the local community and is producing a product deeply rooted in Gibraltar, quite literally in fact. Today, we are visiting Spirit of the Rock, Gibraltar's only micro distillery, who produces premium quality gin and has branded it with one of our most iconic and authentic symbols, the Campion flower. Hi, Peter. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Spirit of the Rock. Thank you very much. Oh, we're to supposed here. to do this now, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll get you to wash your hands when you come in. <laughs> wow. So, welcome to Spirit of the Rock Distillery. Distillery laboratory here. You can smell the, the botanicals, yeah. Wow. Okay, so this is where we make our gin mm -hmm. and our vodka, yeah. Um, the dream was a while ago, Stella and I, we thought why not make a really premium product for Gibraltar to be proud of that could go around the world. Mm. And gin was very much in, so we took a few years to create a blend uh, with the help of a master distiller in London and we opened. We got the keys in April 2019. Right. So it's not a year yet. And, and what did the, the idea come from? Or, or why Gibraltar? Why gin? Um, well, Gibraltar's got a long history with gin, mm -hmm. right from the beginning, basically, 1704, the, the troops that arrived, they were drinking gin. So there's quite a good story. Um, we're actually in George's Lane, which is named after George von Darmstadt, who was the first governor of Gibraltar. Um, and really it came from my wife's family. Stella's family in the 50s opened the first Italian ice cream just down the road at uh -huh. 280 Main Street. Uh -huh. um, and she went walking one day and saw Glen Rocky Distillery and thought, oh, there isn't a distillery. So we <laughs> thought it was a good idea. I, I can hear some bubbling away. Uh, what's the process well, from, from the very beginning? When you make a gin, there are usually quite a few components. It's like a nice piece of music. The big note should be predominantly juniper. Yeah. So we usually start people with that, and then that way they can at least appreciate what that note is. It's actually more than one note. It's very complex. Mm -hmm. The 13 botanicals that we use are all here. So we've got our basic four, the, the juniper, coriander, angelica and orris. That's what should be in every good gin. Mm -hmm. Then we've got four spices and two citrus notes. We've got lemongrass and sweet orange. We add rosebuds from North Africa and campion seeds that only grow in Gibraltar. But what's really magic is this, the carob pod. Do you know the carob pod? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a, a false chocolate. Yeah, it's got kind of a sweet... Uh, creaminess to it, yeah. Uh, and what's sort of a random fact for you is the seeds that come from that, they're all so uniform that in the old days that's what one carrot for a diamond is. So that's what you measure the weight of a diamond okay. with. So we take, if you can imagine, a big tea bag full of botanicals um, we put them into Athena. Athena is our still. She, we named her after, she's the half-sister of Heracles, mm -hmm. and we're on one of the pillars of Heracles. And she's brilliantly the goddess of arts and crafts and strategy. So we thought that was very 
um, appropriate. Mm. We add alcohol and water and then we let it sit for a day or what we call macerate. So then the oils from the botanicals will enter into the water, into the, into the alcohol. And then when we switch it on, it starts to heat up. And when we get to 82 degrees, that's when the alcohol begins to come off. So this is a, a sort of a mini column distillation. So mm -hmm. it goes up, it falls back, it goes up, it falls back. Then it gets to the middle bit here, which we call the reflux in English. In America, they call it the thumper. And then into the final cooling tower there. We're very lucky in Gibraltar because there isn't a great deal of tax on alcohol. Mm -hmm. We can afford to cut it at 20. So many other gin makers would keep going a lot longer, if you like, effectively squeezing the tea bag. Right. So, so you get you use only the purest or, or yeah. the best part the, the of, best the, of the part, distillation. Yeah. So it really is the, the the gourmet section of the gin, and that's why it's um, it's been just voted one of the best gins in the world. I've seen that you've got a visitors book, you receive visitors here, what's, what's the experience when they come to, to visit you? Yeah, well the, the Gibraltar gin experience is a bit of a combination, fun facts about the history of Gibraltar and the history of gin, because they've mm -hmm. had actually a parallel uh, lifetime. So there have been, we could say, three different gin crazes, and the first one started in 1700, around the time that Gibraltar was taken by Dutch and English troops. Mm -hmm. I set up a little table for you to, to sort of run through the whole thing if you okay, like. Yeah. That would make it Very interesting. Um, so we said that basically gin distillation started, or not gin distillation, but distillation which was looking for perfumes, mm -hmm. looking, they, they were alchemists looking for the secret of life or how to change lead into gold. Mm -hmm. That goes all the way back to the Indus Valley in 450 BC. But a very clever chap in 800 AD that we ended up calling Gerber because we couldn't pronounce his name, is actually the father of chemistry because he wrote down all the experiments that had been carried on in the previous 1250 years. Mm -hmm. And he wrote in such a flowery way that it actually coined the phrase gibberish. So that's where okay. that comes from, from Gerber. And the people who translated it were the monks in, obviously, uh, and they, they ended up adopting and understanding how to distill. Hmm. So when we do our tour, what we do is we start in 1055, before the Battle of Hastings, when monks from Salerno in Italy had discovered how to create a, a tonic with juniper berries. So would you like to try some? Yes, yes please. It's almost like the history of gin, the, the, all the it's, progression, the it's development. It's two of things basically. What we're trying to do is to help people develop a, a taste and an understanding so that they can better choose the gin they like. What we wanted to try and do is at least get people to understand where it comes from, what the tradition is. Um, because not all gins are the same. There are lots of different methods of making gin. Mm -hmm. yeah? So we have the distilling it like we do, which we make London dry gin, which basically means you're not allowed to add anything. So what comes off the still can only be watered down to strength and then that's bottled. So that will tend to be clear, won't have any color. Mm. But there are other ways where people will take, they call it compounding, they will actually just take alcohol and add flavorings and colorings and bottle it and they'll call that gin. Okay. And there's a, there's a new trend now, which is new Western dry gins. Um, they've come about because people are trying to avoid having the predominant juniper taste. Mm -hmm. And you could say that they're more like fly, flavored vodka, but that doesn't sell, so they call it gin. Right. So we're trying to make sure the buyer is beware, basically. Mm -hmm. What are you getting? Mm -hmm. So if you want gin, you better buy gin. Yes, yes. If you were going to do a little tasting, what we do usually with our guests, we, we let them have this little pot, they can 
taste the gin and at the mm -hmm. end they can fill up with whichever one they like the mm -hmm. most and take away with them. Um, what you would do if you wanted to try the, the just juniper, there's a, there's a sort of a technique which I'm sure you're aware of, but when you try a spirit, there are three tests basically. The first one you're supposed to do is to look at it to see if it's clear. Then you're supposed to put it under your chin and breathe in over your mouth. And that way you start to get the notes. This one is only okay. juniper, so there's not a lot going on but juniper. Right. And then you would sip it. Yeah. So that's going to be my glass because I've touched it now. So you'll have to have a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the breathing through the mouth is, is more for the uh, retronasal? Yeah, or? it's to try and get, because you've got sensors on your tongue and in your nose. Hmm. So it's, that's what they do at the gin tasting um, when, when they're having okay. to judge all the gins. Okay. Doesn't work if you've got a cold. Right. So what would the alcohol percentage be? That this? one's 48 percent. Yeah. So it's quite high. Mm. Then what we would get you to do is you twill your the thing out, and then we've got some coffee beans here. So this is to reset your nose so that if you're going to taste something else you start mm. again at the beginning because otherwise after one or two you don't know what yeah, you're tasting. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So basically if you just smell the coffee beans mm -hmm. then you, you get yourself ready to go and you'd wash your little glass out. So th this would be the, like the original uh, this, this was Spirit a closer to, to what we know as gin today. Yeah, it's what. So back in medieval times, when people got ill, they went to the monks. Every monastery made a tonic and they let the people have it. So mm. this just happens to be the one that we found that has only got juniper in it right. from 1055. Right. So it's a good place to start. Mm. Um, The visit to this quaint little microdistillery is a lot of fun, thanks to Peter's entertaining and instructive storytelling. We learned that the history of gin runs parallel and deeply intertwined with the history of British Gibraltar. Maritime history, together with strategic bonds between nations, produced both this singular spice beverage and a singular diverse culture. We also learned about the origins of chemistry and alchemy, we discover the links between distillation and early medicine and the different laws, eras and crazes that have shaped the consumption, distribution and commerce of this now trendy product. All of this history can also be sampled with Peter's expert advice as we explore the taste of gin and its precursors through the ages. The definitive product, at least here on the rock, is Campion Gin, a premium quality traditional beverage that can also be enjoyed in many interesting ways. And if they've enjoyed themselves at the end, then I'll make them a cocktail. It really works well in a, in a Negroni. Have you ever had a Negroni? Yes. Yeah? If you like, I'll make you one. Yes, please. You can definitely smell the botanicals of the, of the gin in there. Yeah. That's oh, beautiful. Mm. 